Dear colleagues, welcome to this first edition of a series of three ERA-CODA ECMNSL kidney related aspects of COVID-19. My name is Luc Hilbrands. I'm a nephrologist at Radboud UMC in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. The seminar of today focuses on the risk for a severe cause of COVID-19 in CKD patients. And we will address two questions. First, is CKD an important risk factor for COVID-19 related mortality? And second, are risk factors for COVID-19 mortality in CKD patients different from those in the general population? The second seminar to be held in two weeks will focus on acute kidney injury in COVID-19 and the third seminar on practical aspects of kidney replacement therapy in COVID-19 patients. Today's presenters and panelists are Professor Gonsevoort, nephrologist at UMC Groningen and coordinator of ERA CODA, Professor Ortiz, Chief of Nephrology and Hypertension at Jimenez Diaz University Hospital and Professor of Medicine at Autonomous University in Madrid, Dr. Noordzij, Epidemiologist at UMC Groningen, and Dr. Kushu, Nephrologist, Epidemiologist, and Coordinator of the French End Stage Kidney Disease Registry at the Biomedicine Agency. After each topic, there will be some time for questions and answers, and you are invited to use the Q&A function for posing these questions. First, a few words about ERA-CODA. ERA-CODA stands for European Renal Association COVID-19 Database. It was established on March 21 of this year by the ERA EDTA Council. And it is a prospective collection of granular data of patients on dialysis or living with a kidney transplant that developed COVID-19. In ascension, it has two major aims. First, to investigate the clinical cause and outcomes of kidney replacement therapy patients with COVID-19. And secondly, to gain more information on risk factors for mortality. Let's now start with the first presentation by Professor Ron Gansevoort. Yeah, thank you uh, for your introduction, uh, Luc. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to discuss with you during my presentation is the question whether chronic kidney disease is a key risk factor for severe COVID-19. And uh, these are my disclosures for COVID-19 research. Uh, we received as the ERACODA consortium unrestricted research grants from the European Renal Association but also from the Dutch Kidney Foundation, Baxter and Sendo, and all money was paid to the employing institution. And this slide shows you um, the first results of the ERA CODA consortium. And uh, these results have uh, just been published in Nephrology, Dialysis and Transplantation. And on the left, it shows you the cumulative incidence of ICU admission and on the right, mortality. What you can see in this slide when you're looking at mortality is that mortality um, is high, 21% in transplant patients, even higher in dialysis patients, 25%. What you can also notice is that um, mortality levels off at uh, approximately three weeks. So most of the mortality takes place in 21 days. Thereafter, there is little added mortality. When we have in mind these numbers, 25% of dialysis patients dying of COVID-19, and that is all patients that have COVID-19, because in hospital mortality was even higher with uh, 33%. When we look at the incidence of ICU admission, we get a different picture. There you see more transplant patients being admitted to an intensive care unit, and of dialysis patients, only 12%. And I think that there is a kind of discrepancy between the numbers, especially of dialysis patients being admitted to an ICU and the high mortality in this group. When we more or less are going to um, compare transplant versus dialysis patients, what happens with mortality, we of course to keep in mind that these two groups differ. And here in the left top corner, you see distribution according to age. And in red are the patients on dialysis, in blue the transplant patients. And what you can see that when you look at the subdivision according to age, that there are dialysis patients that are predominantly older. Whereas transplant patients in blue, you've got them in all age categories, 
but most of them at a relatively younger age. These two groups not only differ with respect to a distribution of age when you look at frailty, and frailty is a unique feature of the irrecordical source of what we collect, and that is scored according to the clinical frailty scale that has a number of one being very fit, or the highest number, number nine, and then you are very frail, almost terminally ill. And when you then again look at dialysis versus transplant patients, you see that the dialysis patients, as expected, are more frail than transplant patients. And that is important because when you look at frailty, the association with mortality, you see that the higher the frailty scale, the higher the mortality, similar in dialysis as in transplant patients. And when you look at the association between age and mortality, you see also an increase uh, with increasing age, and that perhaps might be even steeper in transplant patients. So we have to take in mind that there are differences between the two groups in age and uh, frailty. And when we are then going to compare the two groups, and we have done that in this slide, and this slide shows you the crude and adjusted hazard ratios for COVID-19 related mortality. Here on the left in the overall cohort, and we're looking at the dialysis patients as a reference group, and then looking at the risk for kidney transplant patients, and then crude, it is indeed lower the risk of kidney transplant patients. However, when you adjust for these differences in age and sex distribution, you see that kidney transplant patients actually have an increased risk versus dialysis patients. And when you then adjust for frailty or for classical risk factors for COVID-19 mortality, like obesity, hypertension, diabetes, etc., you see indeed that there's an increased risk in kidney transplant patients versus dialysis patients. And some people may object and say, yeah, that might also be because there is a difference in the way people are identified. And kidney transplant patients are almost always identified because they have symptoms. And that's the reason for screening. Whereas in dialysis patients, some of them are identified by screening, but some uh, by screening because they have complaints, but some are also identified because of an asymptomatic screening because they had the COVID contact or because in their unit, there is a, a strategy of asymptomatic screening. And we collect that kind of information in era coda. And when we look at the subgroup that is screened only because they had symptomatology um, suggested for COVID-19, you can see out of the 310 kidney transplant patients, 279 had symptoms, so by far the majority. In dialysis patients, it's different, 812 in the overall cohort and 512 being screened for symptoms and 300 apparently because they were asymptomatic. But even when you limit the analysis to this subgroup screened because of symptoms, you see the same pattern that patients with a kidney transplant have a higher risk than dialysis patients when adjusted for age, sex and frailty or classical risk factors for COVID mortality. This is about the uh, um, comparison between transplant and uh, dialysis patients. There's also another uh, comparison to be made that is with the general population. And here on the left in these two columns, you see the transplant dialysis patients. The middle column shows you the general population. And in the general population, mortality due to COVID in exactly the same time period and weighted for the number of patients from the countries participating in era code, it was 11.4%, as in the transplant dialysis patients, the mortality was higher. It's important to stratify for age, and this is the uh, issue you see here below. Also in the general population, of course, the higher the age, the higher the mortality. What I did in this slide is looking at the absolute risk increase. And that means that this number of 9.1% minus 0.3% means that dialysis patients have an absolute risk increase of 8.8% .8 when compared to the general population. When you look at the various age strata, I think it's striking to see that nearly all age strata, there is approximately a 10% absolute risk increase. And when you then look at the relative risk increase, 
So comparing relative risk in the general population versus dialysis patient, you see a different picture, enormous increase in relative risk, especially in the young, and only a limited relative risk increase in the elderly. And whereas when I started, I had the impression that it were especially the elderly uh, patients that were at risk. Of course, they are more at risk, but the extra risk they have because of being on dialysis is in the elderly approximately the same as in the young, and the relative risk is in the young people even higher than in the older people. And I think this is a remarkable finding. This is about transplant patients, dialysis patients, so patients with uh, 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 kidney failure. But the question is then, are also the earlier stages of chronic kidney disease associated with increased risk for mortality? And the initial reports date from January 2020, and that studied risk factors for COVID-19 mortality. These reports did not mention chronic kidney disease, and they focused on those classical risk factors that we now have in mind as obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, heart failure, and COPD. And only late March 2020, the first reports mentioned chronic kidney disease as a risk factor. That was a study from China, but it mentioned that only 1% of the population had CKD. And we know, of course, that that should be far more than 1%. And no definition was given in this report about what the definition was uh, of chronic kidney disease. Later, chronic kidney disease is mentioned more often in reports as a risk factor and is moving upward as an important risk factor. Well, one of these first studies I would like to show you is the study by Co that was uh, published in Clinical Infectious Diseases. It, um, it, it reports on community dwelling adults in the United States that are hospitalized with a confirmed COVID-19 diagnosis. And it includes more than 5,000 adult subjects. And these adult subjects was, were also known in a registry that uh, looked at risk factors for diseases. And in this slide, you see the adjusted hazard ratio, adjusted uh, risk for hospital admission, adjusted for age, sex, and race. And here you see the risk for hypertension, coronary artery disease, history of stroke, diabetes. But important here is the risk for chronic kidney disease. And what you can see in this slide is that the risk for chronic kidney disease to be hospitalized for COVID-19 is at least as high as for these classical risk factors or perhaps even higher. But this is about hospital admission. What about mortality? This is a study in the American Journal of Kidney Disease. Again, looking at just the hazard rate. Now, a more multivariate model also adjusting for race, diabetes, hypertension, etc. Looking here from the top at mortality and looking at subjects without kidney disease, chronic kidney disease and chronic kidney disease is then not on dialysis, not having a transplant, but a GFR less than 60 and patients on dialysis. And then you can see that there is a graded response that the increased risk is not only there for patients on dialysis, but it's also there for patients with chronic kidney disease. The second lesson that I um, took from this uh, slide is that there is not only uh, risk attributable to uh, patients with chronic kidney disease, but that the causes of death may also be different in subjects with chronic kidney disease versus patients without chronic kidney disease. When you look at the causes of death and you look, for instance, at shock, but especially all the uh, cardiovascular causes of death, like shock, but also ventricular arrhythmia and cardiac arrest, you see a higher risk in dialysis patients and also the tendency to a higher risk in chronic kidney disease patients. However, when you look at, for instance, respiratory failure, you see less risk for mortality in patients on dialysis and chronic kidney disease when compared to patients without kidney disease. And that's not only for respiratory failure, also for thromboembolic events, a problem in COVID-19 patients, you see that actually dialysis and CKD patients have lower risk. That slide showed you increased risk for GFR less than 60, a more even graded uh, um, uh, association you see in this slide. And this reports on uh, a population-based cohort study in the United Kingdom 
and it includes 260,000 uh, subject with diabetes type 1, among which 460 COVID-19 deaths, and nearly 3 million subjects with diabetes type 2, among which 10,000 subjects with COVID-19 death. And again, looking at the hazard ratio adjusted for all kinds of covariates. And what you can see is that the lower the G of R, the higher the risk, and the risk increase starts at the G of R of 60, exactly the cutoff, how we define chronic kidney disease in, um, uh, according to the KDGO classification of chronic kidney disease. Of course, we have also to look at age because people may say that um, yeah, lower kidney function, it might also have to do with age. And this is a subdivision according to age less than 70 years and higher than 70 years. So the darker colors, the younger patients, the lighter colors, the older patients, you see, especially in the younger patients, a steep increase in risk, the lower the kidney function is but also in the older patients, those with an age above 70, you see an increase in risk that already starts at the GFR below 60. And that is less steep, but the absolute risk increase in these uh, type one diabetes with elderly is even higher than in the younger patients. I think the most compelling evidence of uh, chronic kidney disease as a risk factor was delivered by the Open Safely study, and that was published in Nature two months ago. It reports on uh, UK citizens, 17 million people, and more than uh, 10,000 COVID-related uh, deaths. And when you look at chronic kidney disease, and here on top is a GFR between 30 and 60, GFR less than 30, patients on dialysis and patients having a head solid organ transplantation, you see a graded response in uh, mortality risk. And when you now compare it with the traditional COVID-19 risk factors for mortality, like hypertension, obesity, diabetes, but even uh, respiratory diseases like asthma or other respiratory diseases, you see that the GFR below uh, 30 being a patient on dialysis or having, uh, living with a transplant is higher than all these classical risk factors. So I think we can safely state that chronic kidney disease indeed is a key risk factor for COVID-19 related mortality. When we look at the prevalence of chronic kidney disease as a risk factor, that was done by Clark in the Lancet uh, Global Health they use data of the Global Burden of Disease Consortium, and they looked at the population attributable risk due to various risk factors for COVID-19 mortality. And here on the left, you see age versus the number of risk factors. And of course, the older you are, the more risk factors people in generally have. And when you look at the individual risk factors, and you look at the population attributable risk, you see here in orange chronic kidney disease, and it turned out that chronic kidney disease was among the most prevalent risk factors for COVID-19 mortality, if not the most prevalent risk factor for COVID mortality, again, stressing the importance of CKD. Now I would like to switch gear uh, a little bit and talk about vaccinations and chronic kidney disease because you know that due to uremia and the use of immunosuppressive agents, vaccinations often have less efficacy in later stage chronic kidney disease. So stages four and five, but also in hemodialysis and kidney transplant patients. And we know that for hepatitis B vaccinations is true, but also for influenza and pneumococci vaccinations. And to improve the efficacy of immunization, various strategies are investigated as you probably know. But what is happening with COVID-19 vaccination? And I looked at uh, clinicaltrials.gov for you, and I've listed all the large-scale COVID-19 vaccination trials that I could find in this registry, and I ordered them in the order of study completion. And then you have got different producers, different type of vaccines, large studies in general between 6,000 and 43, 45,000 uh, subjects, 
performed all over the world and completed between December 20 and December 21. And what is striking when you look at these trials is that in nearly all patients with CKD stage four or five, patients on dialysis or living with a kidney transplant are excluded from participation. So we will never know from these trials whether the vaccines have efficacy. Only in the Pfizer uh, uh, trial, patients with CKD stages four and five and patients on dialysis are not excluded. And fortunately, the Pfizer um, trials, of course, very promising, and we hope to have already results in, in uh, December. But the number of infected patients, you know, was only 94 out of 43,000, and making a solid a conclusion whether the vaccine also works in patients with chronic kidney disease stage four, five, or dialysis will probably uh, not be possible. Then about uh, vaccines, what about uh, treatment? This is about remdesivir, one of the two treatments that has shown some efficacy in COVID-19. Perhaps you know that when you give remdesivir, especially in early stage disease, so when people are not dependent yet on oxygen, you see that the proportion that is recovering is better on remdesivir than on placebo. When they're using oxygen, again, a benefit of remdesivir, but in later stage disease, when people are dependent on high flow oxygen or non-invasive ventilation or mechanical ventilation or even ECMO, remdesivir has no efficacy anymore. And therefore, because of this study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine and replicated by some small scale studies uh, later on, we're using remdesivir in early stage uh, COVID-19. Uh, but it is important to note that in this study, patients were excluded when they had a GFR below 30 mils per minute per 1.73 square meters. And why were patients excluded from remdesivir trial? Because remdesivir has limited water solubility and it has to be given as IV administration. And when you want to have it uh, water soluble, you have to add a carrier and the carrier is excreted via glomerular filtration and is known to be hepatotoxic and tubulotoxic. But at the moment, we are going to give remdesivir only at a relatively low dose and during a short period of time. And theoretically, you would not expect problems. And this same carrier is also uh, given to make foriconazole more water soluble. It has the same carrier. And with foriconazole, that we know that there are no major problems with respect to hepatotoxicity and tubulotoxicity. Yet, although we have this knowledge, uh, officially there is still a contraindication in subjects with a GFR less than 30, and therefore this drug is withhold from many patients with chronic kidney disease in many centers across the world. And I don't know whether this is uh, uh, whether we should do that. It's only not uh, a point for remdesivir. In this uh, study, they did a systematic review of literature looking at all the trials that were performed in the field of COVID-19, therapeutic uh, trials. And there were 364 trials with pharmaceutical agents. And when you look at CKD patient, in half of them, exactly half of them, they were excluded from participation. There's many of the drugs that are momentarily tested for efficacy for, to treat COVID-19 will not have data available for our patient group. The other drug that we know about efficacy is dexamethasone. With dexamethasone, the, the picture is different than looking at remdesivir. When you look at early, uh, uh, later stage disease, when you give dexamethasone, there is less mortality with dexamethasone versus usual care. And that was studied in the recovery trial just published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And when people had more early stage disease, so were dependent on oxygen only, but not on invasive mechanical ventilation, there was less efficacy of dexamethasone. 
and when people were at very early stage of the disease, so did not have oxygen need yet, there was even a tendency to higher mortality with dexamethasone when compared to usual care. It was not significant, but there was a tendency. So it's dependent on the, the disease stage, and dexamethasone is now given especially to later stage COVID-19 patients. Um, but the problem, of course, is that our patients, at least a part of our patients, are already on steroids. They're using chronically use, uh, uh, corticosteroids. For instance, our transplant patients. And we know when you look at literature that the chronic use of corticosteroids is associated with higher mortality. When you look at influenza, another um, respiratory tract uh, virus, and it is so in patients with various comorbidities, but it has also recently been shown that the chronic use of corticosteroids is also associated with higher mortality due to COVID-19 in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And not only in rheumatoid arthritis, also in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And what about now corticosteroids in people who use these drugs chronically because of a kidney transplant as uh, our patients do, and what to do with these patients with the steroid dose on admission for COVID-19. I don't know how you or what your clinical practice is, but at least in the center where I am working, we routinely, in case of an infection, increase the dose of steroids. And given um, these data about the chronic use of corticosteroids and early uh, uh, administration of steroids, perhaps it being disadvantaged, I do not know whether that is the right way to continue. And that brings me to my last slide uh, in summary. I hope uh, to have shown you that chronic kidney disease is associated with severity of COVID-19 and that the more advanced stages of chronic kidney disease are even more strongly associated with risk for COVID-19 mortality and that the risk attributable to chronic kidney disease is even stronger than that of other conventional risk factors. I hope to have shown you that chronic kidney disease is one of the most prevalent conditions that increase the risk for severe COVID-19 and that transplant patients seem to be even at higher risk for mortality, probably because of the use of immunosuppressive agents, perhaps the role of steroids, but perhaps also the role of other agents. And we are studying that at the moment in our era CODA consortium. And that efficacy of vaccines and treatments may be less in chronic kidney disease. And that this topic, unfortunately, is poorly studied. And for this reason, I think it's correct to conclude that chronic kidney disease is a and perhaps even the key risk factor for COVID-19 mortality. And in my opinion, impaired kidney function needs more attention for risk stratification. And I think that specific vaccine and treatment studies are needed in the CKD population. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gansford, for this very clear presentation. Uh, and I would like now to give Professor Ortiz the opportunity to give some comments uh, on uh, the, the presentation. Thank you very much. I think, I think it was an excellent talk by Ron. And the key message is that uh, CKD message, uh, patients have this very high risk of mortality when they get COVID. But the, the message is that we should strive to understand why. What are the mechanisms of this increased risk? How can we uh, decrease the risk? And especially we should strive to address what's the best way to vaccinate and to treat COVID disease in, in these patients. What we should avoid is to use this information to deny access to uh, ICU care for CKD patients. And in this regard, I had a first question. When comparing the risk of death uh, uh, driven by CKD by dialysis specifically, in the UK study general population versus the American study of ICU uh, of ICU care, it appears that, that there is a much in, much higher risk uh, 
observed in the general population than in the ICU, which may be interpreted as some CKD patients, especially dialysis, are denied ICU care. Do you think this, is, this has been happening? Um, I'm not sure about that. We um, collected in era coda information why people were not admitted to an intensive care unit. And um, when you look at the reasons there, um, there's only a very small percentage that people were not admitted to an intensive care unit because there were logistical reasons. So there was a shortage of beds. So that was not the reason. What uh, most often was stated was that prognosis of those dialysis patients were too bad or that patients themselves or their families thought that uh, prognosis was so bad that they did not want an admission to an intensive care unit. However, when I now again look at the data, you see, although the mortality is high, we can also conclude that most survive COVID-19. And I think that we have to rethink uh, our strategy whether it was correct to inform our patients that their risk is so high that sometimes people themselves or their families conclude, I'd better don't admit me to an ICU, just let me hear because I probably will not survive or when I survive, I will have a very poor quality of life. But this is an assumption. I'm not sure there whether this is uh, really true and we need to investigate this. And I hope that the ERA Code Consortium has the data to investigate this. Nevertheless, Ron, I think we can say that we showed that um, age and frailty are strong uh, risk factors. So if an older patient that is very frail, and we could discuss with that patient if it's useful to, to uh, transfer this patient to an in intensive care unit. True, but uh, when um, dialysis patients even when they are older, have very limited frailty. Um, the fact that patients are on dialysis should never be a sole criterion to deny patients access to an intensive care unit. And I think that's the point that Alberto tries to make. A, a very short question. Uh, transplant patients, they have this increased risk. Uh, can we differentiate between between early post-transplant peri period and later on? And what's the cutoff point in terms of risk? I know that uh, Professor Hilbrands uh, has, uh, in his article, spent uh, specific attention to this topic. And uh, Luke, would you like to answer? Yes, that uh, that's a very good question, um, uh, Alberto. And um, um, in general, we could not... Um, very precisely um, estimate the risk of um, uh, mort for mortality in the different time periods after transplantation and uh, definitely could not say that there is a strong difference between the different time periods but we also did a very interesting additional uh, observation and uh, we compared the um, the risk of mortality uh, in patients that had a kidney transplant less than one year ago with the risk of mortality in dialysis patients that are on the waiting list or are prepared for putting them on the waiting list for transplantation. So this analysis might give an answer uh, on the question whether it's wise to undergo a kidney transplantation when the exposure to the coronavirus is very high. And we found that the risk of mortality during the first year after transplantation is higher than in patients who stay on dialysis but who are on the waiting list for transplantation. But again, these are very small numbers and we cannot uh, draw um, very hard conclusions, but that was at least um, an indication that this might uh, be the case. Thank you. In the question uh, and answer box, there's a question from Professor Raymond van Holder from Belgium. Uh, asking whether there might be uh, a need for different treatments in patients with chronic kidney disease. And um, it, that might be true. The fact that patients with chronic kidney disease have a specifically increased risk when compared to other conventional risk factors. And when you also look at the reasons for mortality in CKD patients versus non-CKD patients, that it is different. It might well be that our CKD patients 
need different treatments when admitted to hospital or when admitted to an intensive care unit. I think uh, you were right there. Uh, I think there's a long way to go there. And perhaps the lessons that we now learn for COVID-19 will all only hold for COVID-19 because I think COVID-19 is a kind of test case how our patients respond to all kinds of viral infections. And the lessons that we have learned here may also hold true, for instance, for CMV or other kind of uh, uh, virus influenza. Um, but that uh, are lessons still to be learned. Yeah, we have a lot to learn. Thank you very much, uh, Ron and uh, Alberto again. And now we uh, will proceed uh, to the second uh, topic of uh, today's e uh, seminar. Um, the risk factors for COVID-19 mortality in the CKD population, are they different from those in the general population? And this will be presented by Marlies Noordzij. Thank you for this uh, introduction, Luc. I'm very happy to pre uh, present to you this second uh, talk of this afternoon about the risk factors for COVID-related mortality in the CKD population, and especially if these factors are different from those in the general population. Well, here are first my disclosures. And then um, I'll move on. Um, well, the, there has been quite a lot of research in the general population into which risk factors influence COVID-19 related uh, mortality. And as Ron also has mentioned briefly, one of the most important and largest European studies on this topic was uh, based on Open Safely. And Open Safely is a health analytics platform in the United Kingdom that covers about 40% of all NA NHS uh, patients. And they um, performed a study which includes over 70 million patients, well, people, uh, of whom almost 11,000 died from COVID 19. Uh, the investigators studied an enormous amount of potential risk factors for COVID-19 uh, related death. And for all these risk factors, they calculated hazard ratios with 95% uh, confidence intervals, uh, which are all shown in this figure. Now let's take a closer look and zoom in on some of the risk factors that are most commonly uh, mentioned as risk factors for COVID-19 related death in the general population. Well, one thing is absolutely clear and that is that older patients have a higher risk of dying from COVID-19. You can see here that patients who were aged uh, 80 years and older had a more than 20 times higher risk of dying when they uh, got COVID-19 when compared to the patients who were aged 50 to 59 years. We can also see that males had a higher risk. Uh, higher risk. They had, uh, their risk was about 60% higher than that of females. Also patients who were very obese, so with severe obesity and a BMI of over 35, had a 40% higher risk. And patients who had diabetes had a 95% higher risk of dying when compared to those who did not have diabetes. When we have a look at cardiovascular disease, uh, they found that patients with chronic heart disease had a 17% uh, higher risk of dying. Whereas those patients who had hypertension, well, surprisingly, had a lower risk. Well, not, there was not big difference, but it almost seemed uh, sort of protective, just a little bit. Uh, and finally, they found that lung diseases uh, gave a higher risk of about 60% of dying from COVID. So to summarize, in the general population, uh, people have a higher risk of dying from COVID-19 related mortality, uh, sorry, from COVID when they had a higher age, when they were male, they had severe obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, or lung diseases. And as we have just seen in the previous talks, also, of course, chronic kidney disease. So I think we now have the picture of what are the most important risk factors in the general populations. But what about patients with chronic kidney disease? We 
all know that the risk of getting infected with COVID, uh, sorry, with the coronavirus is about the same in patients with chronic kidney disease as in every other person. But once patients get, if, get infected, the course of the disease is, is different. The, the, usually the course is more severe um, and also the risk factors for, the, for death could de therefore be different. Well, for that reason, we aimed to study in the ERA-CODA uh, study what were the risk factors for death of COVID in patients with kidney failure. Well, to study that, we included 1,073 uh, patients who presented with COVID-19 between February and May 1st of this year, and for whom we had information on the day 28 vital status available. Of the included patients, 72% uh, were dialysis patients and 28% were transplant patients. And uh, as you can see, the mean age was 67 years in the dialysis patients and 60 years in the transplant patients. So the dialysis patients were on average about seven years older. In both groups, there were more males than females and the majority of patients had at least one comorbidity. And of these comorbidities, the most common were hypertension, diabetes, and coronary heart disease. If we look at the outcomes of uh, COVID-19 in the ERA-CODA collaboration, we found, first of all, uh, that of the transplant patients, 21% was admitted to the ICU and only 12% of the dialysis patients. And if we look at the uh, dialysis uh, patients, we found that 25% uh, died, had a, uh, the 25% probability of death, while this was 21% in dialysis patients. Well, Ron has also uh, explained this briefly, but uh, I will repeat it. This difference, uh, became much smaller when we adjusted for age and frailty uh, and comorbidities because the patients on dialysis are in general somewhat older and less healthy. If we adjusted for these factors, there was a much smaller difference between dialysis and transplant patients. Um, now let's take a closer look. If we, um, sorry. If we look here at the dialysis patients, you can see that the overall mortality was 25%. However, if we make categories for hospital admission, we get a different feeling. Of all dialysis patients, 70% was admitted to the hospital because of their COVID-19, uh, including 12% on the ICU. If we then look at the total in-hospital mortality, this was 34% uh, in, in total. If we look at the mortality on the ICU, this was very high. This was even 53%. On the other hand, if we look at the patients who were not admitted to the hospital, you can see that the mortality was very low. The only 5% of those patients who were not admitted to the hospital died. We see a rather similar pattern in the tra kidney transplant patients where the overall in hospital mortality was 24%. Um, the mortality on the ICU was 45%, so also very high. But again, we see that among the patients who were not admitted to the hospital, the mortality was very low. Okay, well, then we started to look at which risk factors were important, which factors influenced the risk of dying from COVID-19. And the two most important factors that we found were age and frailty. So we studied those factors in somewhat more detail. You can see on the axis here, the three categories for age and here three categories for frailty. Uh, this frailty was measured on the clinical frailty scale um, and a low frailty score means that the patient was, was quite healthy. A score of one means very fit and a score of nine means terminally ill. 
So you can see for the dialysis patients that within each age category, the higher the frailty score, the higher the case fatality uh, rates. And we clearly can see that the highest case fatality rate was found in the highest age group among those who had the highest frailty. And their, uh, mortality, their case fatality rate was quite high and somewhat above 40%. In the transplant patients, we see a little bit different pattern in the two lowest age categories. We see the same effect as in the dialysis patients, but in the highest age category, we see that also patients with a low frailty uh, have already quite a high case fatality rate. So next we studied the um, risk factors that are also very common in the general population that are the most important risk factors there. What we found is that like in the general population, higher age is the strongest risk factor for dying from COVID. We found that patients, sorry, these are only the dialysis patients, uh, that the patients in the highest age category had a 3.3 times higher risk of dying than those in the age group between 50 to 59. We also found the same uh, result for severe obesity, where those patients with a BMI over 35 had a more than twice as high risk as those with a uh, normal body weight, a healthy body weight. Well, but in, if we now look at the rest of the hazard ratios, we can see that in contrast to the general population, we did not find any statistically significant effects for sex, um, uh, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, lung diseases, all of these hazard ratios were not uh, found to be statistically significant. So these risk factors really were different than in the general population. We also had a look, of course, at the transplant patients. Um, here we also saw that a higher age was the most important risk factor, and here e the even stronger than in the dialysis patients with a hazard ratio of eight. But for all the other factors, we can see that the hazard ratios were close to one and not statistically significant. And uh, this may also be explained by the fact that the group of transplant patients was much smaller than the dialysis group. So to summarize, um, the most important risk factors for COVID-related COVID mortality in the dialysis population were age, frailty, and severe uh, obesity, while in the kidney transplant patients, only age was a risk factor. In contrast to the general population, there was no association with sex, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. So we conclude that these factors should not play a major role in clinical decision making. Well, there was one other very large uh, European study that uh, tried to answer approximately the same research question as ERACODA. And this study was performed by the ERA EDTA registry. They included uh, more patients. They included almost 4,300 patients who were treated with kidney replacement therapy and who were diagnosed with COVID-19 between February 1st and April 30th. Uh, in this cohort, 67% was treated with di dialysis and 24% was uh, tra were tra transplant uh, patients. These patients came from seven European countries and their characteristics were uh, rather similar to those of the patients in the ERACODA database. Well, if we look at the mortality that was found in the registry study, we see that it was rather similar to what was found in ERACODA. The uh, patients in the registry, both those on dialysis and those with kidney transplant, living with a kidney transplant, uh, was about 20%, so very similar uh, in both groups. The registry also studied risk factors for COVID-19 related mortality. Um, like we found, they found that higher age was the most important risk factor. You can see that they found that both in the crude and in the adjusted analysis. Um, 
the registry has a, uh, does not collect data on comorbidity, so they could not study comorbidities here, but they did study uh, with the influence of primary renal disease, but for none of these primary renal disease, they found a statistically significant effect. However, what is remarkable is that the registry did find a significant effect for male sex. They found that males had a higher risk of dying from COVID than females. And this is not what we found in Iracoda. So there seems to be a discrepancy uh, for sex as risk factor for dying from COVID. So we have seen that in the general population, male sex is a major risk factor. But it turns out that in the dialysis population, male sex is a much weaker risk factor. We have performed analyses in which we have an ex had an extensive, uh, extensive adjustment for all kinds of uh, variables. And then if in the fully adjusted model, we ended up with a hazard ratio of 1.05. So that's a very small effect. Um, the difference between the hazard ratios that were found in the ERACODA database and in the registry can be explained by differences in adjustment because uh, after some uh, consultation, we found out that if we adjusted for age and comorbidity only, uh, then the, uh, sorry, only for age, then the hazard ratio was exactly the same in both databases. So, and then we were curious how this difference could be explained and therefore we performed some mediation analyses and we found out that the difference could especially be explained by smoking. So males probably smoke more often if we then adjust for smoking, we take away part of the strength of the effect. So, this was, this is my last slide. I would like to summarize for you what I've I've just told you, um, mortality is high at 20 days, 28 days after the COVID diagnosis in patients with uh, kidney failure, and then especially in those who are hospitalized. Mortality is associated in this patient group with advanced age, frailty, and severe obesity in the di dialysis patients, and only with advanced age in kidney transplant recipients. In contrast to the general population, there is no association with sex, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. And these factors should therefore not play a role in clinical decision making, for example, when considering a referral to an ICU. And finally, we think that young dialysis patients should not be denied admission to an ICU just because they are dialysis patients, because their survival seems not to be worse than survival of transplant patients. Luke, you're still muted. Thank you very much, um, Marlies, for this excellent presentation. And I would like to give now the opportunity to uh, Dr. Kushu uh, to uh, give some uh, comments or ask questions. Um, thank you, Marlies, for your presentation. Uh, as you said, it, it shows uh, different risk factors as in the general population. But um, for example, if we compare to the study that we have done in our dialysis French uh, population, we also had different uh, risk factors as used. Uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> obesity was not a risk factor in our study, as well as uh, inability to walk, let's say frailty. Uh, but uh, on the contrary, hypoalbuminemia or ischemic heart disease was a risk factor. So maybe. Um, risk factors are linked to the underlying population uh, characteristics of, or the care that may be different or the screening uh, strategy for COVID. And so my question is, given the fact that now the epidemic, uh, the epidemic has evolved, uh, has evolved uh, over time, care has also evolved, uh, strategy, uh, screening, screening strategy has evolved, do you think that risk factor may also uh, uh, change over time uh, according to uh, all this uh, evolution? Thank you, Cecile. I think that's a very uh, good question. And I also think that it, it is a possibility 
that risk factors may change over time, but I don't know in which direction that would be. And I think it's hard to speculate at this point in time, uh, which changes we, we can expect. I don't know if any of my uh, colleagues uh, has anything to add to that answer. Roberto, do you think uh, that the risk factors will change? Wrong. Yeah, I think uh, that Cecile is right that uh, when we are going to screen more patients and so find more asymptomatic patients, I think that also risk factors for uh, mortality may change. How that will happen and which factors will come up and which factors will go down, I'm not sure. But that is certainly something that we have to take in mind. And if we uh, proceed with uh, collecting data, we might be able to answer this question in the end. Yes, and therefore I think it's very important that we do not only rely on the date of the first wave, but that we need continuous registration of patients, that we definitely need information about the second wave, what is happening there, where we now screen more and different type of patients are, uh, are infected. Thank you. Um, Cecile, do you have uh, any other remarks or questions? No, uh, as, as you just say, we, are, we, are, we still have to continue our studies to better understand uh, this uh, mm -hmm. chronic disease, <laughs> COVID yeah. chronic yeah. disease. <laughs> there was a question from the, uh, the attendees um, pointing to maybe genetic risk factors that could play a role in determining the outcome of COVID-19. Is um, anyone in, in the panel able to give a comment on the role of genetic factors? Might be different, might be difficult to, uh, to explore this in a relatively small population. I know that um, there are genetic um, um, abnormalities in the response of the innate immune system that can increase the risk of a severe course of uh, COVID-19, um, indicating that uh, the innate immune response is re really uh, important um, in um, defense against uh, the virus. But I'm not aware of other genetic risk factors. So Ron, there's also another question about uh, remdesivir. You um, told us that uh, it has not been studied in patients with a GFR below 30. Uh, can you say anything about the safety in dialysis patients? Um, remdesivir is uh, cleared by uh, glomerular filtration. Um, so in dialysis patients, it will also not be cleared. It will only be cleared by uh, dialysis. So probably, but I'm not sure there. Um, because we don't use it in our uh, uh, um, clinic, probably you have to adjust the dose for the fact that patients are on dialysis. And probably you should also give it at the end of a dialysis session, not before a dialysis session. But uh, I'm not aware of specific administration rules for patients on hemodialysis. Okay, there are so for other questions about more practical issues, um, uh, how to handle patients that... Uh, have a prolonged course of um, uh, positive PCRs. And I think these are excellent questions to um, one of the, the e-seminars that is planned in, um, in, in a few weeks on the, the practical treatment of COVID-19 um, in uh, dialysis patients. So we will come back on that issues in that uh, e-seminar. Um, well, we are nearly um, uh, at the end of uh, this e-seminar. I, I would like to make some uh, final uh, remarks. Um, I think uh, it's um, important that we have learned now uh, a lot about um, uh, um, COVID-19 in um, uh, CKD patients, but there, there are a lot of things that we do not know. And um, uh, we have to uh, proceed with additional studies. But it's already time to, to call to make a call to action. And um, um, uh, I can recommend uh, reading uh, this paper, which is uh, in press and will be online uh, very soon. Um, it's written on behalf of the ERA EDTA Council and the ERA CODA Working Group. And um, we made an appeal to take action on a number of issues. 
First, uh, we think that uh, research into the immune and inflammatory response to the coronavirus at different stages of CKD should be encouraged. Uh, second, we think that the role of different stages of CKD and albuminuria as a risk factor for severe COVID-19 should be investigated in more detail. I think we um, uh, showed you the, the importance of CKD as a risk factor in these presentations. And third, we should emphasize, and this is also mentioned already by the, the, the speakers of today, that um, CKD as such does not justify therapeutic nihilism. Um, also, CKD patients um, can have a good outcome from COVID-19. Fourth, um, since the risk factors for COVID-19 related mortality are different in CKD patients than in the general population, more research on this topic is certainly necessary. And finally, we should actively encourage the inclusion of CKD patients in vaccine and drug trials. Well, most importantly, I would like to emphasize that we need much more data to perform, perform high quality research. And so your patients need your contribution to Irocoda. Um, uh, you're welcome to visit our website. You can find a lot of information um, how you can contribute to the Irocoda data collection and also how you can contact us. Um, then I would like to conclude with a slide with acknowledgements of all collaborators of Irocoda and especially also our sponsors for, for funding. Um, I thank, thank the speakers of today and um, I thank all attendees for your attention. Uh, I hope you have a nice evening and I hope to see you again um, in a few weeks with the second and third e-seminar on Irakoda. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.